immigrants live in this country with their luggage. So even though they're home, they haven't settled in. If they really, truly felt comfortable, they would have brought all their belongings out and chucked the boxes away and their luggages. But it's not. It's always the luggage. If the luggage could speak, it would say, when am I going back home? The people who have some um, political activities prefer not to go back again. And sometimes until the government change, when you go there, they can arrest you and then they can torch you and they can do what they want. This is a queen of Denmark, mm. the queen uh, Margaret has ship. Mm. Oh, it's a used to be, we used to be sailing every day beside it. They park it in uh, some places called Nihau. Yeah, mm. so we park there. This is Oslo, if you know it. It looks sunny. <laughs> Surprisingly sunny. Mm. That's you? <laughs> Don't kid me. <laughs> yeah, it's me. Hmm. Different. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> For a long time, I, I, I prefer to, to live in the UK instead of the Netherlands, but it is not allowed. First, I, you, I live in the Netherlands as a, as a refugee, mm -hmm. and then after that, when I got an, as a Dutch nationality, I decide to come to the UK. You're looking for a lot of things, I mean, in your mind, this is the land, this is my dream, this is the land of opportunity. Have you heard that thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it, it goes bursts in your head, and then in the end you find that's what you're not looking for. I'm in between. Uh, my wife is in Somalia. I live here. And my brothers and sisters, and my history is in Denmark. So I'm an in-betweener, and when I say home, I mean three homes. <laughs> so I could live three lives in three months and be in three different places and still call it home. So yeah, yeah I, I, just to be free-spirited, the whole, really the whole world is our home. people that came from villages in Wales, it took them back to that village experience where everybody knew each other. Hey, how you doing? I haven't seen so-and-so for such a long time. And this is like a village within a city. So it's a human contact where two people can stand in the middle of the street and have the loveliest conversation. People come from different countries and they start to, to communicate, and some of them settled here, bring their culture, they didn't forget their culture. A little before 1920, in one of the local newspapers, um, the uh, person writing the article said that uh, what would happen if a group of Tibetan monks in uh, orange, uh, orange gowns with pigtails, uh, beating drums, marched down Butte Street, and he said nobody would notice. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a sort of joke, but it makes a point about multiculturalism, early multiculturalism. A friend of mine now is going to London, and you hear about it up London, but it's blacks and blacks, blacks, whites and whites, and blacks and whites and whites against each other. Me, I don't understand that. I mean, when we grew up here, we all stood together here, which you still do today. Well, well it, again, it, I was the, the whitest kid of all my friends. You know, so when I was, <laughs> in, you know, so when I was in, in, in school, 13, 14, 15, 16, you know, yeah, I was the whitest kid of all my friends. So I, so I had a kind of, um, a bit of an identity crisis of, you know, wanting to be a bit darker, <laughs> you know, to, to kind of fit in. When I first came to Cardiff uh, as an African-American, um, I was shocked by the degree of social integration. Shocked, absolutely shocked. And all these, all these people sharing, I think, one culture. In the end, their background is sharing one culture. Hmm. They are welcoming everyone 
most of the people greeting every, uh, each other in the mornings. Sometimes they asking you, oh, long time we didn't uh, see what's going on. Uh, they are very uh, nice and they are they are um, they treat the child as as their relative or their. Uh, yeah, it's like everyone is taking care of. Yeah, everyone yes, is taking the care. The children lock the door at any time. Sometimes ten, ten in the evening, exactly in summer time. Did you, did you now? It's, it's terrible now, view. I, I'm yes. dreading my kids growing up. That the, our you, our, when we was growing up, it was totally different. But now, there's so much going on. There's nothing around for them. It's disgusting. No one looks up for each other no more. It's terrible. It's really strange. People say, you've still got our community. I said, yeah, because at the end of the day, we have. We all is there, yeah? We all still look out for each other. Uh, I believe Wales used to be like that. We used to have that human contact again. And we just want to teach what we have and give them a reminder of what they used to be. So it would be like jumping on a public transport, being on a bus. Instead of everybody, headphones. Hey, how's it going? Hey, did you see that last night? Like, just be open, share, because you are in the same time, you're in the same frame, and you're living in this journey, so share the moment. Inside Sudan, for example, if you come home, and there are no food, you go to the neighbors. And I think these neighbors, they are doing the same. They are welcome to do this kind of, of communication. Uh, I am sure that at any time if I go and knock the door asking about the bread, they can give me a bread or milk or food or anything. And because even in their culture, there is something like that. Their house, their, their door is always open. Open. They don't close their, their door hmm. at any time. Just enter. And as a black American, I had never seen anything even remotely like this. They may have all been relatives, it's Utah, I don't know, relatives and friends, but I had never seen that kind of, of, of interaction. Um, uh, so, for example, to make, make the point clear, I grew up in California. Uh, uh, but I have never, I thought about this a few years ago, I have never in my hometown been in the house of a white person. Never. Right? I knew white kids at school, some of them were my friends. I knew vaguely where they lived. I knew the direction, I could say, you know, they lived that way. But I, I didn't know any of their parents, and their brothers and sisters, and so on. I mean, I grew up in a, in a much more segregated world. Um, so compared to the United States, for example, even now, but certainly the American, American, the United States of, of uh, the earlier 20, you know, the mid 20th century, and, and so on, um, Cardiff is sh shocking in terms of degrees of social integration. And Americans who come here still, when my relatives come, are shocked by it. Here.